good morning to everyone. So uh, welcome to this um, day two of uh, our um, webinar on reinforced concrete solid set deck. So um, I have to say sorry for today because um, <clears throat> we are actually um, will be having a limited of time. So uh, the contents here will not be fully covered. Um, I will demonstrate step by step the um, geometrical modeling part, including the preparing and importing the DXF. Um, but I'm not going to talk about the um, um, modeling of um, the columns, the crosshead. And, but I will talk about um, how we set up um, the parameters um, required for wood and armor movement and um, the cross-sectional properties, material properties and boundary conditions are all, I assume, um, quite standard um, exercise for all of you out there. So I'm going to skip this. But um, if there is uh, still time after my presentation, um, we'll try to cover maybe um, some of them. So then we'll jump to um, how do we apply the traffic loads onto the deck. And then we'll talk about some um, post analysis um, um, things. So. Um, <clears throat> so get out of here. Okay, so um, we have talked about the uh, the cutting up of the deck into um, elements in day one. So here, you can see this is um, what I've done in um, the um, drafting software. So um, <clears throat> you can see here they are mostly square elements. Uh, five hundred by five hundred mostly, but along the edge. You can see some triangular elements here and there. This is um, inevitable and of course some rectangular as well. So what I want to um, share with you here is um, whatever elements that um, um, we want it to be a plate in Midas, we have to make it one object here in um, the drafting software, meaning that all of this should, I mean, um, all four sites of, or three sites or whatever, all the lines should be joined to become one object. So that is um, important. So you can see here, and you can see here as well, I've already um, also included the, uh, this beam for, the crosshead here, three crosshats. So um, this will also be imported together um, to make our job easier. And also including this um, dummy member, um, this is to make our work easier as well. And we'll talk about that later and you will see. So um, <clears throat> there are many layers here inside this um, drafting file, but um, all these um, elements that um, I want to make um, are all in one layer named FE. So you can put them in many layers, it's up to you, but um, what I did here is just in one layer, FE. So uh, what we need to do is we have to save it as a, DXF file. So um, I put it on my desktop, drawing one dot DXF. Click save. 
and um, quick check my desktop. This is the drawing file, the DSF file, already here. So um, we can close this now. No. Nope. So just to close it. So let's um, go to um, my civil. This is the initial screen you will see once you start up the program. You have to click new to start a new project. So um, wait a little while for the um, web license to verify. So, okay, this is a blank new um, project here, nothing here. So let's start with our import. Click import, how to get the XF. Select the file on my desktop, drawing1.dxf, just created earlier. So all layers um, in the file um, are here. So we just select what are the layers that we want to import. Now, for me, I've put all of them in this layer, FE. So I'll select that to put it here. So all the other things will be left as it is, um, non-material properties or section properties are defined yet. Um, and before you click OK, you have to check one important thing. If your DXF file um, was created in millimeters, you have to change the um, measuring units in Midas to match with that unit in your drafting um, software as well. So I'll change it to millimeters, which uh, was what I used um, to create my DXF file. So click OK and see what happened. OK, here, click on the top view, and you can see that um, the whole thing has been imported. Just an easier view for you to have a look. So, um, Top you can see that um, each element, four element plus one node. So here, you can see that the dummy element is the dummy beam elements. And here, you can see um, the um, cross set elements, um, beam elements with the plate elements. So we will, we will, um, all this, uh, beam elements imported um, along with the plate will just um, make our um, geometrical modeling um, that much um, quicker. So, um, <clears throat> um, I'm, as I say, due to time constraint, I'm not going to show you how to create the um, columns. There are six columns here. And whatever, but um, I believe uh, it is quite, um, quite standard and quite straightforward. You all can uh, try to, try to um, practice yourself or do it yourself. But anyway, the uh, the slides that um, are going to be handed out after the uh, webinar will include um, the whole complete um, process of um, preparing preparing um, this thing. So I'm going to talk about now, um, how do we set the parameters um, um, for us to um, um, apply wood and armor. So um, in day one, um, we, we talked about we have to, not we have to, but, um, I have a range all these um, three elements in such a way that um, the uh, so-called principal axis um, are matching with my intended um, my intended uh, reinforcement direction, which which is uh, um, horizontally and vertically, because um, the piers are here, and this is the uh, 
generally the um, spanning main spanning direction so this will be the main reinforcement direction this is the, this will be the secondary direction so they are arranged in such a way so we have to um, let the software know about this um, for wood and armor moment so the first thing we do we have to define domain that is what the the, the, the name given by Midas for this so uh, we click on this button here under um, node slash element define domain give it a name i'm using slab here for element list it's easy to select all these um, um, elements just um, go on to plate because under elements there are beam elements and plate elements so what we want to put into this Wood and armor domain is all the plate elements. Double click and see all the plate elements um, are highlighted in red, meaning that they are selected. All the elements number are here automatically. So this will be in the list. Um, click add and you will see one domain name slab with all this um, containing all these slabs have been um, created. We need to create subdomain as well for them. So in subdomain, um, okay, I'll just name it um, identically as well. You can put whatever name you want. So here we have to let the software know of our um, reinforcement direction. So there are different ways. Um, I'm going to use the reference axis here. So um the reference axis is basically a um, coordinate system where you define two vectors um, as a reference um, coordinate system to be referred to when um, defining your um, rebar direction as you see here so the first um, reference axis um, should be defined in a vector um, form so I call it V1 is will be um, parallel to I don't know you can see it well here X axis which is horizontally across your screen um, so Y axis is um, vertically across the screen so the main reinforcement as I said before is um, parallel to X axis so you can click a node and pull horizontally and click another time to 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 get the vector here filled in here but you can see that there are some very minor tolerance five point one times ten to the power of negative nine is zero point zero 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 something so to make it um, more accurate i'm going to type it in manually so x axis X axis will be one on the X, zero on Y, and zero on Z. Here, V2 is um, the second um, reference axis in the coordinate system. I will put it as our Y axis. So Y axis will be zero in X, one in Y, and zero in Z. So that is our two um, reference axis. So the rebar direction, um, this reference axis will be vector one. Um, it will be zero degree to vector one. Direction two of the rebar will be 90 degree to vector one. As usual, all the plates uh, are listed into this subdomain here. So select it, click add, and you see um, a new subdomain has been created um, with all the um, parameters needed for wood and um so click close this is domain domain click close as well you can see from here that domain one domain name slab one subdomain name slab as well so um that's all you need to do for um wood and armor moment so um um yeah so, um as I said, I'm going to skip uh, some 
contents now. I have to apologize for that. So um, let me go to um, that's before moving loop. Okay. So um, let's say now it will take some time. Okay. So let's say now um, we have um, created all the columns, assigned all the um, material properties, section properties, everything is done. Um, the, the next thing we do is, um, okay, just to make it clear for you all because uh, we are jumping. So we are done with this, the geometrical modeling. So I have skipped section two, three, four, which is assigning, defining and assigning the cross-sectional properties for the deck, crosshead, the columns and the piles and whatever. Um, and then the material properties, um, just for info, we are using concrete grid 40, which means um, um, concrete grid 40 uh, conforming to BS5400, which means the characteristic strength is 40 megapascal. So um, boundary, we are using soil springs and um, some uh, rigid links between uh, the, um, the um, cross set and the columns. So maybe you can have a look at um, cancel. I think we can close this. OK. Uh, no. So this is the completed model. You can see the deck is exactly um, what I have shown you just earlier, only with the columns and the piles. I think now uh, let me show you the notes here. You can see that um, these are the six columns, okay, and um, these are the piles divided into. Um, one meter sections so that um, the um, soil springs of different stiffnesses can be assigned to each every meter along the depth so this is the complete model so um, quite standard you all can um, and quite conveniently um, uh, um, doable <laughs> by using uh, miters so um, let's jump all this to section five. Now we talk about how do we load the bridge. And I'm just going to cover the primary traffic load and pedestrian load. So all the other load, including even self-weight, will not be um, 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 covered here because um, we don't have enough time and um, um, they are quite similar exercises so um, please explore and um, uh, um, try to um, um, get to it um, yourself so okay how do we load the bridge so um, three things we need to do for a uh, uh, um, loading the bridge with our traffic live load um, traffic lanes vehicles and load cases we need to define these three things um, to minus civil in order for it to analyze the moving load for us so lanes vehicles and load cases um, remember that so first thing is the lane so remember i talked about the um the um um, the dummy member, which is this curve um, edge here. So I have created them so that um, it is easy. It will make my work easier in defining uh, the traffic lanes um, and some other re related um, tasks. So um, I'm going to select it, show it only. I'm not removing the rest, but just um, hiding them 
and this dummy member is uh, is shown. It's actually a series of members along the uh, the inner curve edge. So before we define the uh, the link, because the link is going to be defined with reference to this um, curve. Um, so in order for Midas to apply the moving loop um, in a certain direction, we need to renumber all these nodes um, according to a um, defined direction. I'm going to renumber it um, from small to big along the positive x direction. So to do this, um, it is very easy in Midas Civil. Um, select all the nodes. Actually, nodes are only um, used here, but it um, doesn't matter if you have selected the, beam, the elements as well. So click on node and elements. There's one number here, renumber node ID. Click on that and you, this um, dialog window pops up. So renumbering, starting node number, whatever here, the existing number is that. So we renumber the node or you want to click node and element, it's okay, up to you, but um, node is uh, what I'm after uh, now. So new start number, I'll put it, I um, would use a big number just to avoid changes to more elements. So, okay, so as I said, starting from 1001 at this node, going bigger along the positive x direction so sorting preference the first order will be positive x doesn't matter for second and third click apply and all the affected elements and nodes will be um call up from the hidden um, 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 state so doesn't matter we will um, still select back the dummy members click uh, active and i will show back uh, the, the, only the dummy member will be shown again so um just to uh, be sure show the note number this is display option so i have checked the note number now click ok okay you can see from here one zero zero one two three four five and so on until 65 so there are 65 nodes actually along this inner curve so um, they are good or they are all of them are good for my use to um, define my lane my traffic lanes notional lanes now so okay what do we do for um, assigning the um, traffic links. Click load. Many types of load here, static load, temperature load, dynamic loads, um, settlement and whatsoever. So what we want to do now is moving load. Click on moving load. I am using ES5400. There are many codes here as well. Select what you need. So um, because they are plate elements, the traffic lanes are going to apply onto plate elements. So they call it traffic surface lane. Otherwise, if you are using grillage analysis or other um, methods, you can choose traffic line lanes, not surface lanes. So because of the plate elements, we are using surface lanes. Click on it. Nothing here now because um, it's new. Click on add, add a new surface link. I'm going to link, name it as lane one. So the lane width, um, I've talked about um, in day one about the notional links. Um, have to conform to a, a set of uh, specific rules 
um, given by the code. So um, it turns out that um, for this U turn, we have three um, notional lanes. Each lane is three meter wide. Um, this wheel spacing is according to um, the vehicle defined by the load. Each um, axle of this vehicle will have um, four uh, four wheels. So the distance between each wheel will be one meter. So this offset distance to lane center, we are using this. As I said, okay, let's show the whole deck. Now, okay, this is the whole deck. And um, wait. Uh, something wrong here. Um, Just a second, please. I think um, I may need to. Um, restart it. Just let me try to restart it. I apologize for this. We are running out of time actually. So, okay. So actually I've been having some um, um, some minor problems with my computer since this morning. That's why um, I was slightly late at the beginning of uh, the webinar. Um, sorry about that. So, okay, let's see now if... Um, okay, yes. So, um, okay, let's show this and let's show also the... Um, Active plus. Active means um, to display. Deactivate or inactivate means to hide, not to display. So we are showing the dummy and the deck together. There is where this is where we are going to put our traffic load. So um, okay, I want do one thing now. Um, show this. And I'm going to need to use the note number later on when defining the uh, traffic lane. So these are the note numbers. Remember, we have just numbered them from 10001 to 10065. So I'm going to put it in a uh, notepad temporarily because I'm going to use it later. You will see what I mean. Um, so, okay, bring up the... Uh, the deck as well. Okay, um, load, moving load, PS code, traffic lanes, add new lane. Okay, lane one, lane with three meters as we have explained, one meter wheel spacing. The offset, offset distance will mean the distance of the lane from where the uh, reference notes um, will be. So let's say your first lane is here and the center of the lane is uh, say five meters away perpendicularly. So you will have to put in negative five. I mean, uh, the negative signs, why maybe you, should, you will ask, but uh, don't ask me, um, that's the way. I'm sure there's a reason for Midas to, to define it. So, so we'll put in minus uh, C. Uh, the first lane will be uh, minus 8.9 meters away, meaning it will be 8.9 meters away. The first lane is actually um, near to the outer curve. So minus 8.5. So here, selection by meaning we select the link by our re reference notes, which are numbered this. I will, I'm copying this um, number here and going to paste it here. 
So click add and you can see the nodes are highlighted and the offsets are, 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 are given to every node, meaning that the drain will be created 8.9 meters away. Click OK and you can see drain one is here and it's shown here. So zoom in a little bit. This is the red dashed line is the center of the lane. The blue is the edge of the lane. Um, yeah, um, whatever elements within the two blue lines will be um, um, lane one will be where lane one is. Lane one will cover will cover all, all that. So okay, let's uh, create lane two and lane three similarly so also three meter one but the distance will be slightly less than 8.9 which is three meters away minus 5.9 same kind same um, reference nodes click add click on apply you can see lane two lane one and lane two um, showing up okay do the same for lane three minus 2.9 Okay, click add, click OK, and you can see lane one, lane two, and lane three here. Okay, so you can see here all three lanes um, created, and there's these two narrow strips here. This is the walkways on the bridge. So we are going also to uh, um, define two lanes. Um, for pedestrians, so I'm going to name name it lane pedestrian one. Okay, um, each of this lane, this walkway is one meter wide. So um, Midas is actually assigning the pedestrian load as um, a um, a uh, a series of um, load. Um, they simulated by four point loops across um, the lane width. So uh, four point loops across one meter, meaning that uh, the wheel spacing, which is the point load spacing, is 0 0.25 meters. So um, for lane one, I believe it is also near to the outer curve. The distance will be minus 10.9 okay same reference number 10.9 with reference to the same series of nodes click add click ok and you can see link one link two link three and the new link pedestrian one lp1 okay you can see here so you may ask hey, this is just um, not up to the edge of the deck. Actually, this is for the um, parapet to sit. This is around, I think, 400 or 500, I can't remember. So we'll do the same for lane pedestrian two along here as well. Um, traffic, where is it? something wrong again maybe uh, display. Display. let me try to fix it without restarting something wrong i have to i think i have to restart it oh cancel it pops up now okay so click that lane pedestrian two Lane width is one, wheel spacing will be 0.25 meter. Um, this offset will be the smallest, which is minus one meter. Same reference notes, click add, click OK. And you can see, OK, the uh, lane pedestrian two just been created. So um, close it, you can see all five links, three um, vehicle links, 
two pedestrian lanes all created. You can show them by right clicking and selecting display. All of them will be displayed one by one. So sometimes because um, maybe my computer is not fast enough. So undisplayed to make it um, quicker. So, okay, we have done with um, defining the links, but they are still blank without anything. They are just there um, with no vehicles assigned to them. That's why they are, they are blue. They are in blue color here. So we'll go to defining um, the vehicle that are going to be um, um, used. So click on the vehicles. This will pop up blank here because it's new, new. Add standard vehicles. I'm using BD3701 relevant to BS5400. So um, I'm going to use the fully automated um, HA and HP loading that is um, specified by BD3701. The computer will assign these two different types of vehicles. I mean, um, automatically, of course, um, with reference to the uh, uh, specifications or rules given by the code BD3701. So for HB vehicle, there's uh, a uh, the load intensity, the, the heavy, the weight of um, uh, an HB vehicle is defined by the number of units. One unit would mean 10 kilonewton um, at one axle of a HB vehicle. This is a HB vehicle. In total, there are four axes. So um, one unit will be meaning 10 kilonewton at um, one each and every uh, um, axis here. And this distance uh, is um, variable, variable. So I'm going to use 30. Um, the maximum can be 45 according to what your local authority or your clients um, would um, specify. So I'm going to put it 30 and uh, just to name it accordingly so that we can know click OK. The button here is not displaying correctly because of my uh, um, the screen displaying settings. It is actually OK. So I'm clicking OK. So you can see the vehicle has been created. Um, I'm not going to create the, um, I'm just going to create one, one um, vehicle here. And of course, I'm going to create um, the pedestrian uh, loading as well. For pedestrian, it is um, according to the code. It um, is um, five um, kilopascal. Um, so as I said earlier, along the width of um, um, the uh, uh, lane where the pedestrian load will be applied, three point um, sorry four point loads, um, wheel loads if you like, will be used to um, to uh, made up for five kilopascal. So again, the button here is OK. Click on it. And you can see vehicle, pedestrian. So um, due to time constraint, this is just the two um, live load that I'm going to cover today. So click on close. You can see the two new vehicles here, also in blue color, because um, they have not been um, specified how they are to be loaded. To do that, we have to define moving load cases. So bank, click on add. OK, the first um, load case, I will just name it uh, similarly as the uh, vehicle HK and HB30. So um, um, as I said, the, um, the vehicles is um, an, an automated vehicle, which means the software will um, arrange them um, automatically along the lanes um, 
they are going to be assigned. So I will just click on auto live load combination to, to do that as well here to match with the settings for the vehicle um, before. So you can see here when we click on the auto live load combination, um, according to the code BD3701 as well. So uh, the um, the load factors uh, for different load configurations will be um, different as well. For example, when there is only um, HA loading, no HB, only HA loading, um, the load factors will be bigger than there is HB loading together with HA. So it will be also different um, for combination one, combination two, or combination three. What is What are they? I will talk about them um, in a short while. They will also be different um, under ULS um, or um, SLS. So uh, for simplicity, <laughs> because we are short of time, I'm going to use just one example. I'm going to use um, ULS and combination one um, for this um, webinar. So um, we need to define what kind of vehicles will be used under this load case. To do that, we click on add because they are blank now. So there are three links here on our deck. Number of loaded links will be three. The vehicles that we are going to use is, of course, not the pedestrian, HA and HP30 auto. So the three lanes is these three lanes that um, we have just created. Okay, in the code, um, the code specifies as well, the um, HB vehicle um, should be considered um, to be straddling between two lanes. So meaning that um, they can um, say there are four wheels in, in um, one axis of the vehicle. Two wheels could be on one lane. Uh, another two wheels could be on another lane. So uh, Midas can consider that as well automatically. Uh, so which two lanes to, to be considered? First, of course, is lane one and lane two. We'll click that. Second, um, possibility would be lane two and lane three. So these two um, straddling cases we have to consider. Um, click on OK. You can see that um, it is here already. So click on OK. You can see the first load case for our um, moving load case that's been created. You can create um, all the relevant load cases um, the same way, but I'm going to not going to do that now. So I'm just going to do another case for pedestrian loading. So I'm not going to use auto load because there are no, there are just one kind of load. There is no HA and HB. So for that, um, just add. Now it's only pedestrian. There are two lanes which is LP1 and LP2. There's no HP, so you can't click um, um, HP straddling. That's all you need to do. Click on OK. It's here already. Click on OK and another look case for pedestrian um, loading has just been created. So done. Close. And you can see all the blue colors have turned to black colors, meaning all of them have been used. Um, so that is good. Um, so actually, that's all that, um, um, I mean, uh, not all, but um, that's the way that uh, uh, we need to know in order to define or assign a moving load onto a uh, Final element bridge deck. So click on, uh, before we click on analysis of dust, we have to set, we can set, not we, we have to, 
we can set our analysis parameters here under analysis look for moving load okay this is um, the parameters for us to control um, what we need the software to analyze so this is um, like um, when the load is moving how far uh, every step the load um, should meet so this is like um, three number per line elements of course um, we are not um, loading on line elements now but uh, if you are this will mean three steps per one line element so um, analysis results um, normally i would just use the center um, bending moment of each um, elements each plate elements here so the one important very important thing to check here is you click this concurrent force so what does concurrent force mean so um, um, let's not look at um, this screen here um, imagine a, a beam um, with a load so the beam will have um, um, uh, with two loads maybe or, or several load configurations um, so under each load configurations the bending moment and the shear let's say will be different from each load case so um, the results that um, um, we are interested in of course is the maximum um, re, uh, maximum value of the uh, bending moment and uh, shear or torsion or whatever but the concurrent shear when the maximum moment is uh, occurring uh, we need to know as well because um, I don't know about other codes but bs5400 um, we have to design um, the torsion um, under the bending moment that is um, it is sustaining um, concurrently so in order to get that information this option here has have to be um, um, checked so do this um, this is for the frame um, normal pass concurrent again of course we need that um, okay calculation filters what do you need of course we will need reactions um, maybe if you have some grouping of um, supports you can click group and select what group you want but i will just um, click on all reactions here um, you can select what kind of uh, displacement where do you want to show but um, to save time because it takes a longer time much longer time if you want the, the software to calculate displacement i'm not going to calculate them now force and moments of course we need them um, elastic general links of course there are not too many uh, elastic links by the way in this model so click or uncheck uh, will make not a big difference so we'll click on ok and that's all you need to do um, click on perform analysis and it will run um, according to my um, earlier rehearsals it will take around five to ten minutes so we don't have that time i'd rather um, use it to answer your questions so i'm going to let it run by itself um, and show you the complete um, um, model after the uh, analysis has been um, performed so it's all the same model only um, different stages i i uh, uh, i record it under different stages name is the same you can open two projects of the same name um, together with minus zero no problem 
So um, it takes some time. Sorry about that. So, um, it is slow because the analysis at the other window is just taking up all the uh, the uh, memory my computer has. So it's uh, my God. Okay, so uh, wait for the program to respond. Um, let's see what else that uh, I can close here. Never mind. I think I'll just stay put. I don't need this anymore. Okay, here is it. So this is the complete um, completed. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, after the <coughs> after the um, analysis, so you can differentiate whether a uh, structure has been analyzed or not by looking at here. So. Um, when this is not available, for example, here, it's in the pre-processing mode. This is not available, post-processing mode, when the, the structure has not been analyzed. So when it has, it will automatically go into <laughs> the um, post-processing mode. So let's see what we have with um, our results okay first of all let me just uh, show the plate elements <coughs> the others are not removed just hidden as i as i said so okay um click on result if you want to see the um the uh, bending moment diagram here we call it bending moment contour if you would like Click on force, plate forces or moments. Okay, the load case, click on whatever you want, maybe this one. And XX, which is um, the uh, bending moment uh, um, along the uh, local X axis. Um, click on the uh, uh, yeah, click on apply. So region, show it. Okay, um, I'm showing minimum here, which means um, negative minimum is the sign convention, of course. Um, so the the um, extreme uh, bending moment here is shown with red color, which is about in the range of um, three hundred. Six three hundred seventy kilonewton meter per meter. So here you can see the sagging moments happens um, near the mid span. Um, if I go for maximum, it will show the hogging moment. Apply, you can see hogging moments. The um, yellow yellow color or the extreme red color will be near to the um, the support. Uh, this is an uh, integral bridge. Uh, so, um, okay, you can also look at um, the um, moving tracer. This is an interesting thing that we want to that I want to show you. It's good for checking. Very convenient for us to check whether the output is correct. Um, of course, um, same thing here. Choose your case that you want to study. Which element? Let's say I'll just select one, anyone near the mid span of span one. Um, and I don't need the contour to show. Click on apply. Okay, you can see here. Um, the maximum um, bending moment along the element that I've just clicked, it's a local x-axis, happens when the load 
arrangement is like this. You can view it um, easily. Is it? I don't know. Okay, this way. Okay. So lane one. So it's actually the hogging moment that um, show it here. Okay. The element is 300. Okay. 300. Click enter. Okay. It shows up. 300 is here. This is the element that um, the MXX is the greatest when the load arrange, an arrangement is like this. It's actually the the uh, the hogging moment of this element. So when this span is loaded almost fully, this element will hog up um, um, the most. So if you want to see the um, extreme sagging, click on minimum, click on apply, and you can see from here when I think the element is somewhere. Okay, here is the element 300. So it is sagging the most when lane one is with HA, lane two is with HB, the four axis, each wheel loop. Um, you can see that. And you can see that um, the load of each wheel, 97.5, we are out of time. <laughs> okay. Never mind, just um, exceed a little bit. Um, 97.5 kilonewton on each wheel here. The HA loading, um, whatever load value, 13.6 kilonewton per meter. Okay, even um, I think it's important that um, we look at the results. So I'm going to spend a little more time here. Uh, let's hide the load values. Okay, no more. Okay, this is better, I think. <clears throat> so the red color is the HD vehicles. So you see lane one, lane two, and lane three. This is uh, the load arrangement when the element 300 here is sagging the most. So you can even um, show the load arrangement when a the column, any one column, so beam, because column is a beam element. Select, let's say this column, it's 1811, put in here 1811. So I think, let's say the XO load of this column, I want to see. The maximum axle load of this column. Um, what kind of load arrangement will cost the maximum axle load? Click on apply. And you can see, I don't need to contour to show. Okay, better. Okay, the column is here. So you can see HB, of course, HB is the uh, abnormal heavier uh, uh, vehicle. So when HB is almost directly on top of it, and the other two links are fully or almost fully loaded with HA loading, then this column will be under uh, the uh, maximum axle load here. Yeah, this is the column. So you can show and check um, and see and feel whether the output is correct, whether what you have done to the uh, um, program is um, anyway um, correct or wrong. If something is wrong, so go back and check. Remember, checking is very, very important. And also, um, let me talk a bit uh, about the concurrent. Uh, not concurrent, the wood and armor um, um, moment as well. How do we extract the uh, values for our design? Um, this is not important. When we click on the result tables, plate and force um, union blank, um, this will turn out. And you can see there are three tabs here. Um, the first two is uh, uh, the normal. Um, 
pending moment uh, about the uh, local or the universal coordinate system. What we are interested in is the boot and arm movement here. So click on this to ask you what you want uh, to be listed. So I will, I'm knowing you always using the center uh, bending moment um, of each um, um, uh, the, uh, elements, not the corner. I'm not using the corner moments. So click on whatever locates you want. Uh, it's going to take some time, so I'm going to just select one look case all the the uh, elements uh, here so click on OK so uh, give me some time okay you can see here all the elements here under this look case that I selected uh, center Moment A, moment B, which is the uh, two moments about the uh, element principle axis. M, A, B is the twisting moment that uh, uh, I explained it in day one. I hope uh, you can visualize them better. So, wood and armor moment is the result of all these three, the combination of all these three. Think of wood and armor as the resultant. Moment of uh, these, these three uh, moments here. So for wood and armor moment, um, there are four for a square or any element actually. Uh, top direction one, top direction two, bottom direction one, and bottom direction two. So all this four is what we have to use in our design. So if you want to extract them, it's very quick on this. I mean, it's, it operates very similarly to a computer spreadsheet. Excel, for example, Microsoft Excel. Click on this to select them all. Control C to copy them. Start your Excel or whatever spreadsheet program that uh, you are using. Uh, click on Click Control V to paste them, and you can see the whole table is uh, pasted here. Um, okay. Anyway, I'm I'm in my home now. It's a lockdown here in Malaysia, and uh, we are having a storm. <laughs> I'm not sure um, you can hear me correctly, uh, hear me uh, clearly or not, because um, thunder and lightning stuff there. Almost done, we are almost done. Okay, so you can see M A M B M A B as I mentioned. This is um, the copy from from Midas, the table. This is exactly the same table from there. So what we want to use is actually wood and armor. That's um, you can hide them or you can delete them. So hide this. Uh, that we are not using. Okay, so you can see wood and armor top direction one, top direction two. They came out of it. Um, top a uh, bottom direction one, and bottom direction two here. So they are all shown in positive value so to get the maximum just key in the maximum of this whole column and um, you will have the maximum moment for top direction one as 620 kilonewton meter per meter and you have all the maximum for the res this respective um, location that you want Direction two, bottom direction one, bottom direction two. So you take this and you can do your design. So yeah, just um, like that. So okay, I think um, that's all. I'm using extra time now. So um, let's go to the Q and A question and answer session now. So please 
ask your question if you have any now. Um, we don't have much time. Actually, I was hoping to show you some other things as well. Okay, let's see what questions you have. Um, Fiona Tan asks, are the notes of the dummy being same as notes of the page? Yes, they are. Notes, is, notes are just notes. They are all the same. So you can um, um, define a beam element or a page element um, using uh, two or three or how many notes that uh, uh, you want. I mean, uh, of course, a beam element is um, the connection between two nodes. So a tri triangular plate is the connection uh, between three nodes. It's a square plate element is the connection um, between four nodes and so on. All the nodes are the same. Uh, yeah, they are the same. So, uh, okay. Let's see what else we have. What is the normal analysis time in FEM model for making notation? Okay. Uh, your question is rather um, qualitative instead of quantitative. So, what? How normal is normal? So, let me just um, give you a rough idea. This. Uh, model that we have. Okay, let's see what we have done. Previous. Okay, it has completed. I mean, the the sample model that we have just did uh, uh, took about say less than ten minutes to complete. Um, that is because um, we are doing something else in the background. If it, it is running by itself, um, it's took. We will talk about uh, around five minutes. That is only under moving locators. I don't have um, the um, cell weight. I don't have the temperature load. I don't have the differential settlement loads and so on. It is not pre-stress and whatever. So if it is a complicated structure, uh, it will take up to, from my experience, more than one hour, two hours, something like that. Yeah. So, so any more questions? Um, Chong Wee Lee asks, uh, usually in curved bridge like ramp, the traffic lane width is varying. In this case, is surface lane still applicable? Um, as explained during day one, um, for our design, we have to load the bridge uh, regardless of the real traffic lane. We have to assign them uh, to the worst possible scenario uh, specified by the code. So the code says that uh, the vehicles have to be assigned according to um, the arrangement of notional links. Notional links are um, notional in a way that it is uh, set just for the purpose of uh, traffic load application. So if um, the, the width of the deck is very narrow to a wider than the other end, so you have to think of a way. I can't uh, see. There are some projects, but uh, 
I think it will take time to to do much effort for me to show you now. You have to assign the notional link to the uh, worst uh, configuration or scenario that you can think of. If you can't, then you have to try it. Uh, yeah, that is what is uh, required by the code. So uh, I have come across eight or ten or something. Okay, just eight notional links across one deck. So that eight uh, links will come down to six at the other end. So uh, of course there's a, a, a point where one link will end. So uh, as I said, you have to, you have to, I mean, we are engineers, it's our job to, I mean, uh, make the judgment here. So yeah, you have to uh, judge and to help you do that, maybe you have to to uh, perform a few uh, trials uh, using software or some, maybe some uh, rough hand calculation as well to help you do that. So, um, yeah, I hope that uh, I answer your, your, your question. Okay, so say T, so say T, uh, why the wood and armor movement at the top direction two is smaller than M A M B. Is it? Okay, let's uh, top direction two is smaller than M A M B. This is upper. Um, yeah, it is. Um, it shouldn't be. Um, I believe it's um, due to the sign convention here because. Um, uh, um, um, according to my understanding, the twisting moment will always be uh, an addition to the normal bending um, moment regarding of, uh, uh, direction. But when the twisting moment is negative, it will be not added. So uh, maybe we will pose this question to uh, software developer later. The other direction, top direction one. I believe it's because of the sign convention. Maybe Midas Civil is using a uh, different uh, sign convention for for uh, in this case. Yeah, I believe so because you can see from here. Yeah, um, it's always the biggest. This is for top, one top, top, Anyway, um, I think I will leave this question and um, um, answer it uh, maybe after the, uh, the uh, webinar. So, uh, Let's see what are the questions that uh, we have. Ever uh, ever seen asked what's the mesh size 500 by 500 yes 
mostly most of the elements are 500 by 5, 500 millimeters square, but not all of them. Um, let me just uh, show you the top view of the deck. Most of them are 500 by 500. Some of them are rectangular. Some of them are triangular. And different different kind of triangles. You can see here um, some very stream, um, stream. This is called extreme aspect ratio to me, but um, um, I have said during day one that you should avoid extreme aspect ratio, but um, they are just sometimes inevitable. You can always choose not to view the result of these um, irregular elements, but they have to be modeled, they have to be included into the model in order for the software to analyze the deck uh, as a complete deck and, uh, and the result to be correct but you can just skip and not use the results of those um, regular elements that, uh, that uh, you have there and use all the square elements Okay, Echo Abadi asks, um, could you please share tip to create a polyline quickly for the curved dummy element and also how to create a Foursquare CAD files. Any tips to do it quickly? Um, in short, uh, you just have to be patient. The way that I do it um, is um, let's open up the, um, the file. The way that I did it is um, the, the, uh, the primitive way, if you like, the most straightforward way, just to connect this point with the with this, with the device, connect it um, one by one. Okay, this is the dummy member. I move it down a little bit so that you all can uh, see it properly. So this is the dummy line. Without the dummy line, this is empty here. So uh, the way I create this dummy line is to, to draw a polyline. This way, by clicking them. I mean, um, this will take you like, uh, uh, 30 seconds, one minute. I don't know whether this is quick enough for you, but uh, this is the only way that I know. Okay, for, for straight elements, you can just draw one line, and when you import, when minus import it, um, whenever there is a node uh, in a line, a line will be cut will be separated at the node. So if you draw this one line here, and obviously there's there are many, many nodes because there are elements here. So this one straight line will be divided by all the nodes. That's why uh, you can see here if I select. Oh, because I have hidden it. So all of them are here. Okay. So this is one D, uh, one D five two. This is two. These are two D one five eight and five nine. So one line, straight line. If there are nodes in between, the lines will be um, cut 
into the sections by the notes. So just one more question. Just one more question. Uh, just one more question. Yes, uh, I think you're running late. Uh, let me just show you. Is there any way? Okay, Wong Sui King asks, is there any way to see the combination factor applied by the software? Okay, that is, this is one slide that, that I think I have to use. Who's like that? Okay, let's go to this. Uh, this is actually, uh, sorry. This is actually the, uh, uh, the slide that I want to share with you about the uh, uh, load combination that we have mentioned during defining the uh, load cases in Python. So you can you can remember a combination between uh, in Python, but uh, you can see the load effect. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, the, the storm is uh, quite disturbing. I don't know if you can still hear me clearly. I hope you can. So um um. In BD3701, there are five combinations in total that we have to consider. So combination one, two, and three are the very basic ones. Combination four is generally for secondary such as printing books, sensitive forces, corner forces, or cohesion forces, things like that. So um, they are usually like secondary aesthetic look. So, uh, not That's why uh, we are not covered with uh, the moving load uh, inviters. So, combination five is for uh, five years for the pitch bearing design, which is usually a separate um, exercise. That's why uh, it is also not in the moving load inviters. So, only one, two, and three, and you can see here uh, combination two and three. That's why two and three uh, is can be selected uh, with one uh, one uh, 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 selection in my and a combination of one is, is only different. So this is what the um, combination one and combination two uh, means in uh, my experience. Yeah, you can see combination of load, combination one, combination two or three. So either one, either two or either three will have the same factors. Combination one is different. So choose which one uh, you are looking for. So uh, of course they are also different. Uh, I will give them and and uh, and uh, so. Uh, Answer the question, and the last thing that I want to share here is uh, maybe some of you may ask why do I put the reference note and um, not the outer? So, as uh, I don't know what to say this uh, presentation. Look at the lanes. The lanes are going to be assigned uh, by uh, setting the perpendicular distance between two adjacent uh, nodes. So perpendicularly, the, uh, the lane will be set up the position of the lane. We use the outer nodes along the outer curve. So we will miss some of the uh, that area here quite significantly. So that's why 
you, if you use um, the inner curve, the whole deck will be covered. So, uh, if you know what I mean, if um, if um, we use the outer curve as a reference point, uh, as a reference uh, node, uh, lane three, which is here, would be starting from here and ends here. So, nothing would be loaded here and here. So, that is not what we want. What we want is the whole deck to be loaded, the subject load to be. Uh, moving on the whole deck. So, uh, if you have a curve bridge, make sure you <coughs> you use the inner curve as your 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 reference. Yeah, um, I think um, so. I hope the storm is not uh, <coughs> distracting a lot, and my. Uh, my allergy to the cold, coldness. Um, <laughs> okay, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> so that's all that um, that I want to share today. The uh, the uh, step by step complete uh, demonstration of uh, <laughs> the modeling will be uploaded uh, <laughs> shortly. So. Um, Feel free to pose a question as well uh, to the organizer, and uh, they will forward the question to you. And uh, I'll try to find them. So, um, uh, thank you for the time. And uh, um, wash your hands and uh, stay safe.